Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. On this episode of Build Your Own, we're going to do a buyer's guide review on the 2010 Dodge Charger sedan. If a big American sedan with optional V8 power is your thing, the 2010 Dodge Charger is one of the best and last of this breed. Specifically, we're going to cover the model overview, learn what's new for 2010, go over the configurations and trim levels, check out the standard features on all models, as well as packages and options, check out the performance and fuel economy, safety data, driving dynamics, interior information, specs, Kelly Blue Book value, common problems, and prices on Auto Trader. Before we do, however, I just want to remind you that if you find this buyer's guide review helpful, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. The 2010 Dodge Charger symbolizes two significant elements of Chrysler's past. First, the heyday of V8-powered rear-drive muscle cars, and second, the ill-fated merger with Daimler-Benz. The former lives on in the Charger RT and SRT8 models, both of which boast rowdy V8s that will perform smoky burnouts with the best of them. And the latter is evident underneath the Charger skin, where you'll find some suspension components from old Mercedes E-Class and S-Class sedans, as well as a Mercedes-sourced five-speed automatic transmission. Add it all up and you've got an appealing and well-built car that reminds us of why big, powerful sedans have always had an enthusiastic following. Like its platform mates, the Chrysler 300 and Dodge Challenger, the Charger comes with less muscular engines too. There are two V6s available, one with a rental car grade 178 horsepower, and one that puts out a more respectable 250 horsepower with a four-speed automatic and rear-wheel drive form, and all-wheel drive gets you a five-speed automatic. Yes, it's the Charger's Hemi V8s that deserve the most attention here. Even the RT's 5.7 liter V8 makes a beastly 368 horsepower, and tricks like variable valve timing and cylinder deactivation technology allow to get the fuel economy of the 3.5 liter V6. If that's not enough, the SRT8 comes with a 6.1 liter V8 that pumps out 425 horsepower. However, the SRT8 is unavailable with all-wheel drive, meaning the V8-powered RT all-wheel drive is perhaps a uniquely attractive offering for enthusiasts who require all-weather performance. The 2010 Dodge Charger receives standard side curtain airbags and minor exterior styling tweaks, but is no longer available with front seat side airbags. There was also an extensive reorganization of its trim level structure and options availability halfway through the 2010 production run. The 2010 Dodge Charger is a large four-door sedan available in base, 3.5, rally, RT, and SRT8 trim levels. Rear-wheel drive is standard and all-wheel drive is optional optional on all but the base and SRT8. Standard equipment on the base charger, formerly the SE, includes 17-inch alloy wheels, air conditioning, full power accessories, heated side mirrors, a tilt and telescoping steering wheel, keyless entry, cruise control, and a four-speaker stereo with a CD player and an auxiliary audio jack. Stepping up to the Charger 3.5, formerly known as the SXT, Nets you a larger V6 engine, 18-inch wheels if you option it with all-wheel drive, and satellite radio. The Rally adds 18-inch alloy wheels when optioned with rear-wheel drive, fog lamps, power driver seat, power adjustable pedals, a 60-40 split folding rear seat, and a rear armrest. The chrome and leather package adds 18 inch chrome clad wheels, automatic headlamps, dual zone automatic climate control, a power driver's seat, heated front seats, leather upholstery, and an upgraded six speaker sound system. Chrome clad 20 inch wheels are optional on the Rally. The Charger RT adds to the Rally with the chrome and leather package minus the chrome wheels, the V8 engine, an iPod interface, an auto dimming mirror, steering wheel mounted audio controls, Bluetooth, and a touchscreen stereo faceplate. You can also get the road and track package that includes 20-inch chrome-clad wheels, sport-tuned suspension and steering, a rear spoiler, heated sport seats, and Alcantara upholstery. The Super Track Pack adds performance tires, a different axle ratio, and upgraded brakes and shock absorbers. Optional on the Rally and RT is a media center package that includes a navigation system. The SRT8 is equipped a lot like the RT with the Road and Track Package, but adds the bigger Hemi V8, high performance brakes, a hood scoop, a limited slip rear differential, and different exterior trim. The SRT Option Group 2 adds upgraded instruments, auto dimming mirror, Bluetooth, the touchscreen stereo interface, and a 13-speaker surround sound stereo system with iPod interface. The SRT Option Group 3 is essentially the RT's media center package. The 2010 Dodge Charger is available with four engines, one for each trim level. 
rear wheel drive is standard and all wheel drive is optional on the 3.5 rally and rt the all wheel drive system can automatically or manually disconnect the front drive shafts to slightly improve fuel economy. The base charger gets a 2.7 liter V6 that produces 178 horsepower and 190 pound-feet of torque. A four-speed automatic is standard. Considering the engine's meager power output, fuel economy is a lackluster 18 miles to the gallon in the city, 26 on the highway, and 21 combined. The 3.5 and Rally are powered by a 3.5 liter V6 good for 250 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. This engine gets a four-speed automatic with rear-wheel drive and a five-speed auto with all-wheel drive. Fuel economy ratings are 17, 25, 20 with rear-wheel drive and 17, 23, 19 with all-wheel drive. The Charger RT is powered by a 5.7 liter V8 making 368 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque. A five-speed automatic is standard. Fuel economy ratings are 16 city, 25 highway, and 19 combined with rear-wheel drive, and 16, 23, 18 with all-wheel drive. The Charger SRT is the king of the hill with a 6.1 liter V8 that produces 425 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. It too gets a five-speed automatic transmission. In track testing, the SRT8 went from 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Its fuel economy ratings are 13 city, 19 highway, and 15 combined. Anti-lock disc brakes and stability control are standard on all chargers, except for the base, which has them as options. Side curtain airbags are also standard, but front seat side airbags are no longer available for 2010. In government crash tests, the 2010 Dodge Charger achieved a perfect five stars for frontal crash protection and rear side crash protection. In the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety Frontal Offset Crash Tests, the Charger received a top score of good. In the IIHS side impact test, however, the Charger received the second worst score of marginal. The V8-powered 2010 Dodge Chargers are guaranteed to plaster grins on enthusiast faces as they sound great and deliver massive forward thrust on command. However, most of that fun is had in a straight line, as even in RT or SRT8 trim, the Charger's light and uncommunicative steering doesn't instill much confidence on winding roads. Ride quality, however, is quite pleasant. Among the lower level engines, the 3.5 liter V6 is a decent choice for those on a tight budget, but it's neither powerful nor fuel efficient relative to competing V6s, and the rear drive version comes with a very old four-speed automatic transmission. The base 2.7 liter V6 is sluggish, not efficient, and barely passes muster for rental car duty. The Charger's cabin features good materials, quality, and simple controls, though the styling is on the bland side. The seats are softly cushioned but comfortable overall, and those included with the road and track package and in the SRT8 provide plenty of lateral support. The Charger's larger size and long wheelbase translate into a generously sized cabin with plenty of rear leg room. Unfortunately, the Charger's sloping roof line makes rear seat access more challenging than other sedans, and rear headroom is a bit less than normal as well. The trunk can hold 16 cubic feet of luggage, a smallish figure for a large sedan. Okay, so let's go over some specs, and I think the best place, or one of the best places to do that is here on Edmund. So the first thing we can do here is you can actually check specs by particular model and you can see all the different models here here they're saying the most popular one is the one with the 2.7 liter uh v6 engine the one with the least amount of horsepower then they're showing the rt and the rally and they show them in different configurations all-wheel drive rear-wheel drive etc etc they say edmund says that the your very base model dodge charger 2010 dodge charger is the most popular one so let's check the specs for that one we can see that back in 2010 your starting msrp was just under twenty five thousand dollars gas engine four speed transmission rear wheel drive we know you can't get all wheel drive with this model you got to go up one level v6 engine there was seating for five as we can see and way back in 2010 this car had a very basic three year 36,000 mile warranty here. They just reiterate the drivetrain stuff, which they already said. Rear wheel drive, four speed transmission. Here they show us fuel economy and range and all that. We kind of went over all that stuff already. Uh, some notable things here though, is the fuel tank capacity is 18 gallons and you can go ahead and just put regular unleaded fuel in this bad boy. So yeah, 178 horsepower, 190 pound feet of torque, 
uh, double overhead cam, V6 engine, very basic engine, should be very, uh, at least uh, relatively affordable to service, but we're going to find that out here. We'll get around a common problem shortly. Here, they've got all the different uh, safety features, and this looks like some standard stuff. Emergency interior trunk release, engine immobilizer, all basic kind of things, front seat belts, <laughs> stuff like that. Here, they show some packages. Uh, I don't really know what the package 23C was. There wasn't probably a whole bunch to be gotten on your very base model. Uh, your in-car entertainment, you had your very basic AM, FM stereo, four speakers. It was very basic in here. I'm not going to go over all of these. If you want to go over all the comfort and convenience and power features and stuff like that, simply pause the video. Uh, let's see, move forward. What else is there? There are some cool things, though. We can check front seat dimensions, so front headroom. 38.7 inches front shoulder room a very comfortable 59.3 inches that's like mercedes s-class comfortable uh then we have front leg room at 41 or uh, yeah 41.8 inches and then front hip room a very generous 56.2 inches uh rear seat we've got uh, headroom 36.2 hip room 55.5 leg room 40.2 rear shoulder room 57.6 we won't go over all these other dimensions. We'll pick out a few of them. Your overall length is 200 inches. Your S-Class, Mercedes S-Class is 206. So you're not quite as, it's not quite as big a car as a Mercedes S-Class, but it's very much a very full-size sedan. You know, you got a ground, you got a ground height, right? The height of this vehicle is 58.2 inches. What else? You got a wheelbase of 120 inches. Uh, cargo capacity, we already went over that, 16.2 cubic feet. This vehicle weighs just under 4,000 pounds. Here's what's really cool, though. We can check out the exterior colors and the interior colors. And when we mouse over these, it'll actually give us the names. So let's go over the interior color. I'm sorry, the exterior colors for the base model uh, 2010 Dodge Charger. So you got the Inferno Red, uh, Crystal Pearl Coat. Uh, there's a Tor Red, uh, Deep Water Blue. There's a Mineral Gray. Un unreleased paint okay i don't know what that is uh dark titanium metallic stone white we've got a brilliant black we've got bright silver metallic and a white gold and as far as interior colors here we've got they all kind of look the same dark slate gray with leather suede we've got the dark slate gray leather uh the dark slate gray cloth uh the dark slate gray and light slate gray leather and the dark slate gray and light slate gray cloth. I don't recall if the leather interior was available on the base model. But anyway, and anyway, we got some colors here. We, we know some interior colors and some exterior colors. You got the 17-inch wheels, came with a steel spare. You had some very basic suspension, nothing fancy. Even though it was off some Mercedes stuff, that was very old, outdated uh, Mercedes stuff. That was their old chassis stuff. It wasn't their current stuff of the time. Uh, and then, again, here's their little basic warranty that they had for 2010. Okay, let's check some values on Kelly Blue Book. Now we'll go through all the different models. Uh, here we're looking at the base model and the first thing that I noticed is that there's five recalls on this vehicle Now we will take a look at the recalls after we look at the values for all of the models So this is the base model charger. Uh, I've got the mileage listed at 125,000 miles. Here's the reality 13,500 miles is your average miles driven a year. This vehicle's 11 years old. That puts the mileage at just under 150,000 for most vehicles. So about 100, 148,005. So I think I'm being a little generous at 125,000 because I think you could see some with more and maybe some with less. So at any rate, your trade-in value, and all of the vehicles will have this 125,000 mileage thing here. So I'll just talk about that just this once. Uh, so the trade-in value for your base model, 2500 Good luck getting that. <laughs> There's no way anybody's probably going to give you that without probably having to pull some teeth for that one. Private party value, however, what's the private party value? Private party value is $5,200. We'll see. We're going to take a look on Auto Trader after we go over Kelly Blue Book, and that'll give us a general idea 
on what these are selling for right now. Okay, so let's go look at the next model. So now we're looking at the SXT. Remember, there was a model name change mid-year. The SXT is now called, well, yeah, the 3.5 and the SXT are the same thing. So your trade-in value for an SXT or 3.5, per you know kelly blue book is 2836 your private party value is 5700 dollars okay now here we are looking at the rally the rally has a trade-in value of 30 an average trade-in value of 3188 and a private party value of 5749 okay moving up here now we're looking at the rt RT has a trade-in value of $3,741 and a private party value on average of $6,700, just over $6,700. And then here, lastly, we're looking at the SRT8. They say that the trade-in value is $9,730 and your private party value is eleven five. dollars Okay, so I said we were going to take a look at those recalls. Here they are. I wasn't sure what they were going to be. It seems like there's four re uh, airbag recalls. Let's see what they are. Front airbag modules uh, there basically is a front airbag mod. This second one here, they're going to have to replace the driver's front airbag inflator. That was for the driver's side. Then they're going to have to replace the passenger side. So it seems like the airbag stuff was a hot mess in 2010. So there's a recall on the ignition module because there's a, there's a situation where the key may be removed from the ignition switch. Uh, prior to placing the shifter in park, obviously that could be an issue. So that's going to have to be replaced. Obviously, that's free of charge as well. And then there was another recall for the passenger front airbag inflator as well. So you've got some airbag issues, and then you've got the ignition module as well. Okay, so before we go check out prices on AutoTrader for all the models, let's talk about common problems for the 2010 Dodge Charger. Obviously, you know, we're just going to brush on this and go over some of the highlighted information, but there's gonna be a lot of information for you to go over. There's gonna be a lot of different kind of search terms you can use to come up with different results. But let's take a look at the top results from RepairPal. There are actually seven, I think they said there were 17 problems. So find the most common issues based on car owner complaints. So here they're talking about the PCM, TCM software updates will address shifting problems. So that's with your transmission. Uh, more transmission shift quality issues, cable failure in window regulator motors. Uh, here they're talking about the software updates that will solve electrical and lighting problems. Uh, check engine light due to failed thermostat. Uh, uh, replace lower seal, steering shaft seal. Uh, steering shaft will squeak uh, while turning. Uh, disinfect disinfectant issue to address musty odor and AC system. Maybe you might need to change a filter there. I'm not really sure. Fuel tank is hard to fill. Uh, you got a rear differential issue. You got a lot of different issues here. Uh, here's a check engine code there. Uh, a vibration in the steering wheel. And there's actually a page two. Page two gives us a water leak into the transmission tube. Uh, and then spilling sticky liquids around the cup holder may cause lid to... Yeah, okay. Well, those are just... That's just a silly one there. But as you can see, there are some legit uh, issues, common problems with the 2010 Dodge Charger. All right, lastly, let's jump here on Auto Trader and check out what real world values are for a 2010 Dodge Charger. Here, we're looking at the base model. Here, they call it the SE. You know why? Because like I told you, they changed the names up during the model year. The base model used to be called the SE, so it was easier just to find them as SEs, we can see prices here, $4,700, 176,000 miles, eight grand, 160,000 miles, 4,500, 138,000 miles. There wasn't very many of those. So yeah, there are some SEs there. Moving up the trim level, now we're at the SXT, also known as the 3.5, uh, 142,000, six grand. Here's one for 140, with 140,000 miles, eight grand ones with no pictures in there. I never like to look at those. Here's one for nine grand with 124,000 miles on it. Here's one with a funky painted uh, hood and, and roof with 130,000, 129,000 miles on it for 6,800. So uh, here's one for 8,900. So yeah, you can see the prices here. 
So definitely, uh, definitely an eight thousand dollar and under vehicle. Here's a rare one for ten thousand. A lot of them don't have photos. Here's another one for seventy eight hundred. So yeah, seems like eighty five hundred dollars right here for this one, basically with ninety one thousand uh, miles on it. That would be an all wheel drive too. That's like all the money really. Now let's take a look at the rallies here. The rallies. Uh, now we're getting a little bit closer to ninety five hundred. Uh, $10,000, $8,500, a uh, little bit uh, better on the mileage on these though. This top one here, $134,000, $7,500. This one, white one here has got $98,000. This one's got $125,000. This gray one's got 100,000 uh, miles on it. They want ten grand for it. Here's one for $7,500. Here's one for nine grand with 91,000 miles on it, 110,000 miles on it. Seems like the rallies have better mileage on them so far. Seems like the, the lower model ones just get driven hard, like super hard. So maybe as you go up in tier, it works out a little bit better. Let's go check out the RT, see what the prices are running for those. All right, so here we are in the RT. Uh, 10 grand for this one, 133,000. Uh, 13 grand for this one with 85,000 miles on it. This guy wants 12 grand for his, 35,000 miles on it. Certainly all the money. Wow, that's all there are? You know, just so you know, I did this on any distance for all of these. So I was surprised that there's not more RTs. Maybe you got to go look on places like Craigslist and Facebook classifieds, but surely they're out there. Last but not least here, we can take a look at the SRT8. Obviously, there's not very many of these. There's just a handful of them. Uh, here's a nice blue one with 126,000 miles on it, 12.8. Here's one that's a honey, all the money, 20 grand, 29,000 miles right there. Here's one for 14 with 119,000. Here's a black one for 20 grand, 70,000 or just 79,000 miles. Nice car. Nice car. So not many of those, but uh that's to be expected. Okay, so I think we learned everything we needed to know about the 2010 Dodge Charger. We went over the model overview. We found out what's new for 2010. We went over all the trim levels. We found out all the st uh, standard features. We went over the options, the packages, went over performance and fuel economy data, safety, driving dynamics, interior. Then we jumped over on Edmonds and looked at the specs. We went over to Kelly Blue Book. We uh, went on Repair Pal and checked out common problems. And then we finally checked out prices on Auto Trader. So I, of course, like the SRT8. But the properly optioned RT with the right mileage and in good overall condition would certainly make the list. So uh, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you found this buyer's guide review of the 2010 Dodge Charge informative or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel.